Um, the next speaker is uh, Caroline Ochiang, uh, also from Stockholm Environment Institute. Um, and she will be uh, speaking about a, an interesting uh, community project in Kenya, and it's about the um, financial incentives um, to promote health. And I believe it's, um, it's aimed uh, uh, around uh, pregnant women, and uh, it's a rather innovative thing, and it's attracted um, quite a bit of attention both in the region and in amongst funders as well. So, uh, Welcome, Caroline. Welcome. Yeah, so my, the topic of my presentation is, is the Good. feasibility and uh, potential sustainability of financial incentives for health. And uh, in this case, the focus is on pregnant women in Kenya. So, I'm, I'm a researcher based at Stockholm Environment Institute here in Sweden, where we've been working mainly on household energy issues and health as well. Oops. Yeah, so a, a bit of a background to this project. So we have very high maternal mortality in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. And you have, um, I mean, we, we are coming to the end of the Millennium Development Goals, which called for 75% reduction in maternal mortality ratio. But there's been very slow progress in this. And you can see where you have a greater than or equal to 1,000 deaths per 100,000 live births. It's mainly in Africa region. And I think uh, all the presentations here brought out some of the factors. You're talking of uh, in poor water and sanitation and uh, diarrheal diseases and uh, use of biomass fuels, indoor air pollution. All those are among the main contributors to the high rates of maternal mortality that we witness. So quite a number of environmentally related factors. So focusing on Kenya is among the countries where you have highest maternal mortality rates. You're talking of 360 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births. And uh, when you look at the causes of these deaths, most of them can actually be prevented. And uh, especially if uh, women come into contact with the healthcare services when they are pregnant and throughout the course of pregnancy. And that entails antenatal care clinic visits and delivering at the health facility and also postnatal checkup. And with a ANC especially, the benefits can be quite substantial, not just in terms of early detection of complications, but it's also a very good avenue for bringing in other interventions, whether it's health education on maybe the need to use efficient cook stoves or on the need for clean water and sanitation. It provides a very good opportunity for getting into contact with the women at that point to offer these extra services. But then you find very low rates of attendance for these services. So when you try to focus on the reasons of why you have this, and maybe I would like to emphasize that although this project is looking at pregnant mothers and attending clinics, but they, the same challenges encompass all the other issues related to water, sanitation, cook stoves, and so on, is that there are so many underlying reasons why people do not use the technologies that work. So the, the science of technology development is going on, has gone on quite ahead, but there's um, very low knowledge on why people behave in certain ways they do. So in this case, you have a proven technology that uh, if women could attend AMC services and receive those targeted interventions at that stage, then you'd have better health. So if people use 
water, wa hand washing and so on. It's uh, known that it works, but then people don't use them. So in this context, then there are issues that are directly financial costs like women have, there's no transport to take them to the clinics or to take them to hospital. So even if they know they need to go, then they would not go. But those are the direct ones, and there's been a tendency to focus on those. But then they are also very high in direct costs associated with this. For instance, if a mother is to go and spend three days in a hospital giving birth, who cares for the remaining children at home? Or if they are to spend a whole day traveling to go to clinic, then who is there to go to the farm or to do all those other services? So they, there's high opportunity costs associated with this that then makes one not to be able to take on that recommended behavior. So this project is looking at personal financial incentives. And uh, I mean, uh, from uh, behavioral economics is that individuals commonly hold inconsistent preferences for similar outcomes of occurring at different points in the future. And then you have outcomes in near future are valued more than those in the distant. So going for clinic is good for the health of my baby who will be born nine months later. I don't know what exactly the outcome would be. But then I have to miss going to the farm today. And, and that's more important to somebody than later. And if I pick like on the cook stove issues we work, we work, I've worked a lot on. So use this stove, it's going to be good for your health. You are not going to develop uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease later, but we are talking of 30, 20 years maybe down the line. But in the meantime, okay, it means I have to cut my wood into small pieces and so on, or I have to purchase it. So then and that limits people taking or rather adopting this kind of interventions so you have pfis which have been used and have shown quite success in the developed world so for ex for uh, given a few examples so like weight loss programs if you go in the uk for instance so you lose some pounds and you are given some cash or um, there are project programs that pay employees, people are given money to quit smoking. So you have, uh, and the justification is that if people get sick from these complications, then you are going to spend much more treating them. But give them this immediate reward, then they would take up such a behavior, which is positive for their health. So they do it for the money reason rather than for the health reason, although behind it you know that you're targeting her. So let me talk <coughs> more about this project, so which uh, was uh, funded by the Gates Foundation for the pilot phase. So the idea is to test if using personal financial incentives can retain women in the continuum of care from early pregnancy till birth and postpartum period. So from the available evidence, women do go for this antenatal clinic visits, but they only go once. And most of the time they go very late in pregnancy. But uh, ideally WHO recommends they should go for four visits and then give birth in the health facility and come back for postnatal follow-up. So you need six continuous visits. You miss one and uh, it doesn't quite work, the strategy, as it should. So we will we'll be using cash. The, the values um, have sort of reduced. This was what we had initially, but we've been told uh, you can actually manage it at much lower cost, so we might enroll more women. So the idea is to get 200 women who are pregnant. At the stage, we enroll them, we give them a card with a cash value and then if they honor their next appointment they get a high amount so the amounts the amount of money they get increases so that the last visit which is to bring back the baby for final checkup 
then they get the maximum amount. So with this, the, the, it's, the idea is that they would come for all their visits compared to, and then we make a comparison with the, the rest of the population where this incentive is not offered. <coughs> yeah, and the, the aim is to assess if the PFI can actually influence health behavior in this regard. So I'm approaching it from a research perspective rather than program testing the hypothesis if it can work and then to see if it's feasible to implement it in this setting. And if it is feasible and if it's shown to work, then later do a randomized trial, or a big study to actually demonstrate if it is effective. Yeah, and if successful, then you can have very significant outcomes, say if it's a program scale. Because from research, you see that just A and C visits can lead to up to 65% of lives saved in Africa. And giving birth in hospital can lower the deaths that occur at delivery by up to 50%. And then, like I was saying, if it's successful, then it's also a method that can be replicated to other behavioral determinants of health. So where people struggle to internalize the benefits so you give financial incentive, but for a targeted period of time, so that then they are able to see that actually this service can benefit me. And after that, then you probably do not need an incentive anymore. So then they would have known and internalized the benefits for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, so this is our time plan. We are currently at the planning phase, getting all approvals then to implement the pilot project which you run for 18 months period. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can le leave that one there so we can see the, uh, the website, thank you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> so any questions to, um, to Caroline or Chiang? I think all of us uh, who have been born in the north know that our mothers received uh, some sort of child allowance uh, to make sure you didn't starve. Um, but this thing about the incentives to, to make sure that you even get born and that the mother stays alive, that's interesting. Thanks, Caroline. I, I just had a burning question because, you know, this whole thing, as I'm listening to her, I'm wondering how she would see that um, having heard what health clubs can do, how she would operationalize this concept. Because I think the idea of uh, rewarding women for coming for, for consultation is brilliant, but how do you roll it out and how do you operationalize it? Wondering if she could see the role of a community health club in this context. Yeah. Uh I mean, I think this would be a very, if you are to roll it out, it would be very expensive if you are to be offering every mother some reward for each visit they make. So it, uh, you can't do it with everyone. But I mean, from what I've heard of the community health club, it looks like it's something that uh, maybe if you could uh, link with the clubs, then uh, maybe you could have it out as, um, like some lottery system or something that you are a part of the club and then maybe if you participate, maybe you have an opportunity to win and then you'll get this kind of services. Then in which case you've involved every, everybody or, uh, yeah, so it becomes a reward for participating. And it looks like it would be an incentive also for then people to join such clubs. From what I've read in other countries. So they develop some of the ways they've trialed this approach is, yeah, have uh, lottery tickets. So you win and then you get this rather than just giving out to everybody. So everyone still participates, but then you, you have an equal probability of maybe winning this cash value for every visit you make. It's, it's the motor to uh, health insurance. Uh, when, when a life is worth something, then you can see that countries start insuring um, 
their, their citizens. And I, I think this is, I feel like, the beginning of it. I think through the CHCs you'd have that, um, you could house it, and of course it's an integrated uh, part of it. So.